Hi everybody, how are you all doing? Today I welcome you all for this second language English class 9 lesson 3 part 2 session. Okay, that is my beginnings part 2 session by Kapil Dev. Welcome you all children for this session a warm welcome and welcome back. Okay, let's recall we have understood something in the previous class. Okay, I don't know whether you remember or forgot. Let's recall now. Kapil was born in 1956, who was uh, very naughty from his childhood. So, this is a lesson straight from the heart is giving us something. The childhood days, naughty works, is it not? So, he was born on 1956. Next point is, Kapil used to bunk classes, watch movie, eat chicken chow mein and breaking the fruit of his neighbor's tree. Okay. Next one. Couple spends two hours on papaya tree because he wanted to break down the fruit. Unfortunately, he had a tea party under that same tree. What happened there? Under that same tree, party was arranged and he has to stay there for two hours and he understood something staying there in the tree. Kapil recalls before going to this, let us recall that incident on staying that tree for 2 hours, he understood that papaya sap can cause skin rashes, is it not? Okay. Now, we are moving on to another point, what he recalls here is, Kapil recalls another naughty incident of that lady's garden where she grew pomegranates. How many pomegranates you might remember? 92, is it not? As that lady leaves to Delhi, after counting the pomegranates, so that she, so that she can keep the account of fruits which might be stolen by Kapil's naughty team. Okay, this is what that lady had in her mind. She understood, if I leave to Delhi, this all children come and they pluck the pomegranates. But what happened? Same thing, Kapil's team attacked the pomegranates garden. As soon as the lady left, they took down all the 92 and ate whatever they could and the remaining they shared with others. Yes, after her return, she explained his mischief to his mother. So, this is what happened in Kapil's life, the naughty incident. See, even we children do that. Even we have done in our childhood days. We look for some things which we get and we really, uh, some ladies, you know, uh, girls, they look for some flowers, boys, some look for, they look for fruits or something like that. So, all these mischievous things we have done in our childhood days. Let us come to today's lesson. Let us come to the quiz time now. What is the quiz about? It is nothing but you have to recall what you have learnt in the previous days, previous class about the vocabulary. Okay. Now, let us let's see children. What is that? You have to guess the meaning of the given statement. You have to guess the meaning that you have already studied in your previous class. To entertain someone by telling them about something. What is the meaning of that? You have read already in the previous class. What is that meaning? See there, meaning is regale. Yes. Next one children, you have to guess another word. To suddenly leave a place without telling anyone. So, you just recall what is the meaning of that word? So, bunk. Suddenly you leave a place without informing anyone means that is the word bunk. Next, to be surrounded by something especially hills or countryside. So, what is the word for this? Nestle. So, word for this is nestle. Okay. Let us move on to our lessons continued part my beginnings by Kapil Dev. Okay. Please take your lesson and I think the continued part fifth point onwards. The other really naughty thing I remember doing is riding the police horses 
that were left in the huge open green areas to graze. A few of my friends and I would go there regularly and try to ride them. They were huge police horses, not used to clumsy children scrambling on to them, but despite innumerable falls and many a fright, I learned to ride and to control a horse. In fact, even today, I am quite comfortable on a horse without a saddle as that was the way I had taught myself to ride. Taught myself to ride? Once we had learned to master the horse, there was one I became particularly attached to. We became more courageous and ventured out of the fenced area with the horses. Nobody would have noticed except for the fact that I bit off more than I could chew. I decided to take the horse home and house them, house him in our back, back garden which was about 700 square feet in size. The horse could probably have been tethered there. But I hadn't anticipated the struggle I would have in getting the animal through the tiny five and a half foot by two foot doorway we were caught within minutes of our arrival. The horse of course was duly returned and the chidding I received from my father discouraged my venturing near the grazing fields again. I was never very studious and I and always preferred to spend my time playing games and participating in athletics where I could use up my energy. I went to a small local school that had few cricketing facilities. The games they offered at the time were basketball, football, table tennis and hockey probably because all they required was a ball, a couple of sticks and a nut. I was fairly good at all games, exceptionally good at athletics, but dreamed of becoming a footballer. I worked hard at that game and was selected to play for my school. Fortunately, all my friends were interested in and played cricket and they convinced me to change my game. That is a decision I will always be grateful to them for as they unconsciously introduced me to the game for which I was made. Slowly, almost imperceptibly, I switched from one game to the other and began to spend a lot of time, lot of my time on the cricket field. Naturally, I played in a number of inter-school tournaments and came to be noticed as a promising lad in the local press. But it was all merely fun to start with. I could never have imagined where cricket would lead me and I certainly had no plans then of becoming a professional at all. Yes, children. Now we are moving on to glossary part of the lesson. Let us see for the word fright. The meaning of the fright is a sudden feeling of fear. So see the sentences here. Though my aunt is aged, though she is aged, as soon as she sees the spider, she jumps with fright. So whoever may be, some see cockroach and jump, some see lizard and jump and some spider. Okay, This is a fright, meaning of that. Next word is tether. To be so tired and that someone no longer could deal with an upsetting situation. Okay, The sentence here is, finally I could able to tether the troubleshooting horse. So, able to 
bring to one end or able to tie that horse. Okay. Next children, venture meaning here is to do or try something that involves risk. Okay. Next one, see the sentence there. I ventured a lot to understand the theory of light by breaking off many bulbs. Okay. So, I have to understand some meanings, but for that I have to risk many things. So, here the sentence states that he broke many bulbs to understand the theory of light. Next word, studious. The meaning is spending a lot of time studying and reading. Okay, here is a sentence. See who is studying there. Call me studious. All call me studious because I spend most of my time in studying. Okay, very nice. You can see the seriousness of the studies. Next one, saddle. A leather seat that you sit on when you ride a horse. You have, I think you have gone for a horse riding. You might have understood this. You can see there the saddle. Okay, I prefer saddle to sit on horse and to go round for horse riding. How Kapil used to uh, uh, ride without a saddle? It is really hard. You can't. You can't even imagine. But he did. And here the sentence says that it, I, I prefer saddle. I need that. Okay. Next word. Imperceptibly. Imper, imperceptibly. Meaning is almost impossible to see or notice. See the sentence here. What is the sentence there? It was highly imperceptible to find out the remedy for the corona virus. So, it was highly impossible, almost impossible. Now, come to the highlights of a lesson. Let us discuss in detail children. The other naughty thing Kapil explains here. First, you have understood the papaya trees incident. Second one, you have understood pomegranate incident. Is it not? And here, Kapil wants to explain is another naughty thing that is, remember, he is riding the police horses that were left in the huge open green area. So, they are, they are experiments with the horses now. Whose horses? Police horses. Now, let us see for the another sentence. He learned to ride despite innumerable falls and many a fright and control a horse. You see, without, I told you when we stated the sentence, without any pain, you cannot gain anything. See here, he tried many times, innumerable falls and he learned to control a horse. Is it not? Even today, he is quite comfortable on a horse without a saddle. It is really highly impossible, but he could do that because of his innumerable faults and practice. Next children, we became more courageous and ventured out of the fenced area with the horses. So, we means couples, team. So, they were very uh, familiar to that and they started to uh, love what graze and take them out and ride and after that what they did? They took courageously out of that area. Nobody would have noticed our mischief. So, they kept in mind all these things and they took that out of that place. What happened? He decided to take the horse home and house him in his back garden which was about 700 square feet in size. So, you could have understood the horses were very big in sizes and here he wanted to keep him in his own houses in the back garden, okay, which was only 700 square feet in size. Okay, now, see what problem he, he, he faces. He explains the struggle he had in getting the animal through the tiny five and a half a foot by two feet doorway. Is it possible? You can imagine it is not at all possible to take a big animal in a small tiny door. Okay. And 
he is, he is telling the struggle he had, how he could have faced that uh, horse to push in, in that small tiny door. We were caught within minutes of our arrival and my father discouraged my venturing near the grazing fields again. So, usually all will scold if we do mistake. Even his father also reminded him not to do such things and not to go for such area only. And he was caught within minutes because no one dared to do such things and he did. And now children, we are moving on to another point there. He was very studious, is it not? No, he is telling he was never very studious. He was not a studious, means he was not very good in studies was not serious about studies and always preferred to spend time, his time in playing games and participating in athletics where he could use up his energy. So, even all children do that. All children will support Kapil Dev sir now because they say, sir even we do that. We are, we even we to join with you because we too like to play than study. Is it not? So, this is how here he is telling, I was not interested so much in studies and I used to participate, play more in athletics and spend all my energy to that than in studies. The games they offered at that time in his school were basketball, football, table tennis and hockey probably because all they required was a ball all the ball games they used to play in the school because they only required the ball. So, he used to participate in every game, every match so that he used to spend his energy for that. Now, you can see he was good at all games, exceptionally good at athletics but dreamed of becoming a footballer. Actually, he was not a cricketer, he was not a cricket player, he was a football player. He was interested in playing football and becoming a big person in that. But what happened? Fortunately, all his friends were interested in and played cricket and they convinced him to change his game. So, even our friends do that. You come and join in this game. Let us play this. So, as that person comes here and that friend group make us to be interested with that game. So, we lose interest with the previous game. Even he was taken to cricket and the friends convinced him to change his game and that made him what? That is a decision that he is always grateful to them for as they unconsciously introduced to him to the game for which he was made. He was made for that game. Which game? Cricket game. He created a history in in cricket, is it not? So, unconsciously who introduced to him? Unconsciously his friends introduced him to that particular game. He recalls to that uh, friends. Naturally, he played in a number of inter-school tournaments and came to be noticed as a promising lad in the local press. But it was all merely fun to start with. He could never have imagined where cricket cricket would lead him and he certainly had no plans then of becoming a professional at all. So, he never knew what he will be in the future, okay. But he understood that his friends led him to a good game because it became his profession in the future. Now children, let us come to the language in use. You have understood the lesson in detail. Now, we are moving on to the language in use. Your textbook activities is there what we understand. Let us discuss in detail. This is an auxiliary verb means. We are going to know or we are coming to know in detail about an auxiliary verb. What is the auxiliary verb means? See here the statement. An auxiliary verb abbreviated as ax is a verb that adds functional or grammatical meaning to the clause in which it occurs so as to express tense, aspect, modality, voice, 
emphasizers etc. It is also used with the main verb. Now, you have understood it is it adds wherever it works it adds something to that meaning to that verb to the tense wherever it is. Let us see in detail then we will understand. So, helping verbs in English. See in the present past we find two types of in the tenses as we consider present and past we use in a different uh, tenses different helping verbs. Let us see which are they. First we come to the B forms of this helping verb which are the B forms see am is and the present tense we are taking am is as a singular B forms and are as plural for the present tense B forms ok. Now come to the past tense. So, under B forms we use was for singular were for plural under past tense under B forms ok. Now come to the do forms children. In under do form for the present tense we use do and does. Do is also used for singular and do is also used for plural as for the sentence demands and does is used for only singular in the present tense ok. Now come to the that to the third person does is used for third person. Now come to the past tense we use did only did for the past tense in the do forms. Come to the have forms children have forms there we will see the present tense have and has have is used for singular and have is used for plural also in the present tense and has is used for only third person in the present tense singular ok. Now come to the past tense children we use only had had for the past tense. You might be questioning me what is this ma'am am is are do does have all this. This is where we really need to know why our grammar is lacking and where we really make mistake unless and until we understand this properly our English will not be perfect ok. Let us see now I was telling about third person all such things is it not in English we have persons who are the first person who is the first person is I. So, always I is the first person. Now second person is you ok with whoever you talk whomever you point is the you second person ok. Third person is he she and it ok in Kannada we call avanu avalu adu ok. This is the third person singular in present tense or past tense it can be. Now come to the B forms for the present B forms for the present for the as for the person wise I have taken. Now see there for the person I am eating in the previous slide we have we have seen am there is it not. Now in this slide we are seeing I am eating we cannot use I are eating I were eating you cannot use see I am eating it comes under B forms which is the B form there am is the B form. What happens if you leave the am and read eating I eating see it will not make a sense. So, when you add am only makes a sense it makes you understand whether the sentence is present and past and it also adds meaning to the verb ok. I am eating and now see the another sentence there you are eating and now for the third person he is eating, she is eating, it is eating. You cannot use here instead of is are or am only you can use is because that is the B form which you need to use. Next children. B forms past for the first person how you use I was eating. So, am is replaced with was because it is past ok. Now second person you you were eating ok and the, for the third person he she it was eating because it is singular. So, he was eating she was eating and it was eating. Now come to the B forms of 
positive and negative. You can see in your textbook, I am for that if you make negative, I am not in the contraction short form what you make it, I am not some call I am not some call aunt okay. and some they might get confused with this I am not or aunt whether sometimes it is used I am not because we go with American and British English. English. So, for that you have to understand which English you have been using that makes there the difference. Next one is was for that when you make a negative was not ok under positive it is was for when you make it negative it becomes was not when it make a short form of that was not ok then positive is when you make a negative you add not to that is not ok when you make it short form is not ok next one is are here many make problem what are not some call aren't it is used aren't because you are first one am not you are used aren't and am not here you have to use aren't ok are not in a short form aren't ok and the last one is were were b forms were we is used in positive yeah, when it comes to negative were not weren't ok all these are the forms which we use under b forms used under positive and negative. So, positive you can see there is no not there in negative you can find all the not because it is making the statement or the sentence anything negative ok. Next we are moving on to the sentences in detail for that positive and negative see the persons I, you, he, she, it first person, second person and third person. B forms positive, B form positive, positive you should not have any not there, I am eating. So, now when you make negative what it becomes I am not eating ok. Next one B forms positive you are eating second person and next B forms negative you are not eating ok. Next B forms positive third person she is eating, he is eating, it is eating. When you make it negative B forms negative she is not eating, he is not eating, it is not eating. So, what makes negative not makes negative understood and when you do not have not positive ok. These are the B forms positive and negative. Now, let us move on to the right word you have to select choose the right word given in the brackets. Let us see the use of credit cards dash you have a choice there has have increased 100 fold in the last decade. So, the answer here is has ok. Some might get confusion with cards ok. You have to go with the use of credit cards as a whole. Next one half the students of the class dash was were absent yesterday. Even here also many get confused see there the answer here is was ok half of the students. Next as a class you have taken whole ok then it becomes was. Now children the number of poisonous snakes dash is are not known accurately. The answer here is R, the number of poisonous snakes. The last part of this session that is home assignment. Yes, children, I think you have understood. Okay, write your homework. Now you have to understand this and write. Do the project. Thank you so much children for listening to this class. I hope you have understood this lesson. Thank you. Have a blessed day.